Hello YouTube, this is DVD Review Studios here, and today I'm going to be doing a DVD and Blu-ray update for November 2014. Uh, I've been putting this DVD update off for uh, quite a while now, mostly because I've not exactly bought that much, but uh, I've got three Blu-rays and quite a few DVDs, so let's begin with the Blu-rays. Uh, first up is the complete second season of Hannibal. Uh, I got this on the pre-order on Amazon, which uh, it arrived quite quickly, and to be honest, I have never seen such superb television in all my life. The suspense, the writing, it is absolute genius, and I cannot recommend this uh, TV show enough. It's just so gripping and cutting edge, and I would definitely recommend giving it a watch. Uh, this is going to get an individual review, so I won't go into too much depth, but uh, honestly, I absolutely adore this television show, and I cannot wait for the third series. So, yeah, that's uh, Hannibal Series 2. Uh, next up is something I haven't watched yet. I found this for a pound in uh, a shop that I've actually never been in. Uh, I don't even remember the name of it, I think it was Vinyl Exchange or something, but uh, they had a couple of Blu-rays in and I had a glance, and this is part of the Dirty Harry collection. Now, I was aware that there were sequels to the Dirty Harry movie that Clint Eastwood starred in, but I wasn't sure how many, and this is just one of them. I think this is the fourth one. Uh, so, I'm going to guess that there is a decline in quality regarding these movies, but for a pound I thought it's a Blu-ray, it's just it's worth a watch I suppose. And uh, I haven't seen this yet, but I will watch this eventually, so that's uh, Dirty Harry, uh, Sudden Impact. And then a Steve Carell movie, which I was vaguely disappointed in. It did have high expectations for me, but the ending just annoyed me, to be honest. And yeah, it's uh, Steve Carell and Keira Knightley in Seeking a Friend for the End of the World. Now, the whole concept is marvellous, but it just... it really does, it's a hit and miss sort of comedy. Some people like it and some people don't. There are a couple of funny scenes in this, but it really is something that bored me to tears, so. Uh, if you're looking into this, watch it online. It's definitely not worth buying, to be fair. So that's the three, uh, three Blu-rays I've picked up. Now to DVDs, first up is uh, Stanley Kubrick's A Clockwork Orange. This was recommended to me by uh, my good friend Dean, aka TV DVD Mega Clips. And honestly, this is one of the most superb movies I have ever seen. It is one of those off the beat, sort of uh, controversial kind of movies, but honestly, I loved every second of this. Uh, the music, the whole idea of this, it's just, I really want to read the book now, um, which I should have done really prior to watching this, but I did want to check out the movie. And uh, quite a lot of uh, interesting scenes in this have been used as pop. Uh, culture references throughout other things such as The Simpsons, South Park. I did pick up on a couple of things that were in this that I had seen elsewhere. So, uh, yeah, Clockwork Orange. I would definitely recommend picking this up. It's such a great movie. Uh, next up is Brandon Lee in The Crow. Um, I was skeptical of her buying this, and honestly, I loved every second of this. Bra uh, Brandon Lee sadly passed away throughout filming uh, this movie, and so they had to reconstruct an uh, alternate ending, which wasn't on the original script, but uh, aside from that, I mean, it was truly immense, it was remarkable, and for an old 1994 movie, I am quite surprised at how they actually managed to capture such imagery for the ending, even though it did look as though it was another person portraying uh, the Crow character. But yeah, that was The Crow starring Brandon Lee. It's quite good. A disappointing film now, Trick or Treat. Uh, I didn't really have high hopes for this anyway, but I thought it would have been at least mediocre. Throughout, it might it might sound arrogant of me, but throughout the whole film, I was just thinking to myself, how would I have done that better? And it truly is one of those sort. I mean, there's one thing I will give props to, and that's this little creepy character here. Uh, Sam, I think it was called, and it's just some sort of weird thing that looks like something from Alien Resurrection when you take a little sack off his head. But uh, it was it, the concept was interesting, and the way that from the beginning looped to the end, like so. But it isn't something I'd recommend. So quite disappointing. More disappointment now. Dylan Moran, uh, live comedy monster. I love Dylan Moran, he's such a quirky and interesting, unique guy. He's got quite an interesting brain on him, and this just failed for me. It's basically just him ranting about bollock all. It's just, it's not anything that 
actually has a point. And usually comedians, they have something to stand by, they have something to relentlessly go on about. Whereas with this, I just, it felt like a short straw to me. But yeah, Dylan Moran, he's a great comedian, and uh, he was the star in the Channel 4 TV show Black Books. But for a live comedy, this has put me off quite a lot of his stuff. But yeah, that's that. Liam Neeson, non-stop. Saw this in the cinema when it first came out, and I thought it was pretty decent, so I picked up the DVD. Um... Again, it's great, but once you've seen it, you've seen it. I just wanted to give it a rewatch, so I picked it up cheap. Uh, it was okay, I guess. I mean, Liam Neeson is a superb actor, but he does this sort of action, I have a gun sort of character throughout every film, and it's just, it is getting a bit of a bore now. However, something interesting is Liam Neeson in The Grey. Now, uh, I wanted to see an after credit scene at the ending because if the ending cut to where it did end I would have been beyond disappointed but honestly this is such a brilliant phenomenal uh, film and I would definitely recommend giving this a watch I won't spoil it but it's just it's more than Liam Neeson fighting wolves it's just I can't it's something that is completely inexplicable and truly remarkable as a film but yeah, I think this is definitely one of my favourite Liam Neeson movies now. It's a lot better than Taken, in my opinion, but that's just me. Um, moving on to the mediocre sort of stuff now, <laughs> Ice Age 4. Now, I went into uh, CEX, and I just noticed this in there, and it was £3.50 uh, without this ridiculous slipcover. And I walked into HMV, and I was buying a couple of things, and this was on the shelf for buy something, you get this at 2 99 so I thought I'd pick it up, it was new sealed and everything. And I only really got it because I hadn't seen this instalment from the Ice Age movies, plus this slipcover is the most ridiculous thing I have ever seen. It, it's just a pushover for the festive season where they've just shoved awful looking Santa hats on every character. It's just rubbish compared to the actual cover. It just really made me laugh in a way, but... Yeah, the film itself, it was okay. It wasn't anything spectacular. I still think that the third Ice Age is the best. Uh, Dinner for Smucks, or Schmucks, however you want to pronounce that. Um, Steve Carell, once again, and Paul Rudd. I looked on IMDb, and this was a really low-rated film, so I thought, eh, why not? It's only a pound. And I watched it, and I preferred this over that uh, Seeking a Friend from the End of the World Blu-ray. It's just... I. Don't know, it's Steve Carell acting like an absolute fool, and it just really made me laugh, so... I don't know, but it was a, quite an okay film. Probably not everyone's taste, but I thought it was okay. And now the final two things, the Cleveland Show Series 1. Um, skeptical over this one as well. It was good for its first run, but just the season 2, 3, and 4 I thought were pretty mellow. But Series 1's okay, and I did get this for only £2, and it's, I think, 5, 6 discs? 5 discs, so you can't exactly go wrong there. So, yeah, that's the Cleveland Show Series 1. And now finishing up with um, Ashes to Ashes Series 1, which this was the sequel series to uh, John Sims' Life on Mars, and I thought it was good, it wasn't great. I really only watched this for Philip Glenister, since he's such a superb actor. But... Yeah, it was decent. It wasn't ex exactly anything special. It was just good, I guess, for a follow-up. But I'm mulling over whether to get Series 2 or 3, but yeah, it was quite good. Box set, to be fair. So yeah, that's my update for November. Please rate, comment, subscribe, and check out my other reviews.